Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbraham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I had the opportunity to introduce our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr., who's going to be sharing a message this morning, Jesus is King. We also want to celebrate our pastor celebrating him preaching for 56 years. 56 years in the ministry. 56 years in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're so excited to be under his leadership and under his ministry. And I know you're being blessed by the word of God. So why don't you go ahead and grab a friend. Grab a co-worker. Let them know that the word of God is about to be preached. You know what time it is. Let's go. can, will you please stand for the reading of God's Word. I invite your prayerful meditation to the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. St. John chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. If you have it, say amen. amen. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Speak, Lord, and help us to listen. For I ask it in your name. Amen. Subject for this morning, Jesus the King. Jesus, the King. For thousands of years, the Jewish people had been looking for a Messiah. 
They were expecting a great military leader, one who would overthrow all of their enemies and restore Israel to its former greatness and glory. What they had not expected was that their king would appear as a carpenter. They never expected that he would possess no weapons, no army, and political power. They certainly never knew that he would be crucified on the cruel cross of their oppressors. However, throughout the earthly life of Jesus, they were given evidence on top of evidence that Jesus is who he said he is. He proved his identity time and time and again by his miracles, by his pedigree, by the place of his birth, by signs and wonders too numerous to mention. Yet they refused to believe him that he was in fact the Messiah. Time and again he revealed himself unto them, and time and again they rejected him. So much so that John puts it this way. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. John chapter 1 and verse 11. That is, Jesus came unto his own, as in family and friends, yet they refused to have him. Now, in this 12th chapter of St. John, Jesus is once more about to reveal his identity to the nation of Israel they will be given one final opportunity to receive their king. This chapter, which records the details of the last few days of Christ's public ministry, paints a portrait of Jesus, the king. In these verses, we see him, who he is. And he came to do and how he carried it out. Once again, in these verses, we see him, who he is, and what he came to do and how he carried it out. Now, as we consider these truths about the Lord Jesus, I challenge you to look into your own heart and see whether you stand in regard to the king. Have you received him? Or are you living in rejection of this one who loves you so? Allow, allow the word of God to speak to your personal need today as we consider together Jesus the king. Point number one, the presentation of the king. The presentation of the king. We see that in verses 12 through 19. Note the method of his presentation. Note the method of his presentation. Now, Jesus clearly proved his identity by fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy. You see that in verse 15. Now, when the Romans saw Jesus riding a donkey 
They probably thought it was all a joke. After all, what king rides a donkey? They did not see him as a threat to Roman power. Many of the Jews probably wondered why this one who would be king was riding a lowly donkey. After all, wouldn't Messiah be riding a powerful war horse? Even Christ's own disciples did not understand the import of what they were witnessing. Verse 16. However, anyone in the crowd who knew the prophecy of Zechariah rejoiced greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass or a donkey and upon the coat, the foe of an ass. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Now when they saw Jesus entering the city on this particular day, they knew exactly what was happening. Jesus presented himself just as the prophet had said that he would. He came as their king. He came as the king. Next note, the moment of his presentation. The moment of his presentation. Jesus made his ride into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. Just a few days before his death and exactly one week before his resurrection, his entrance into Jerusalem on this particular day was no coincidence. Rather, his entrance into Jerusalem coincided exactly with Daniel's prophecy as found in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. In these verses, God's plan for the nation of Israel is on display. God will finish his work with Israel during a 70-week period. Note next, if you please, the multitudes as, at his presentation the multitudes at his presentation now the people who saw Jesus entering the city understood the implications of what he was doing therefore they cried Hosanna which means save now now, in light of his miracles, most notable was that of raising Lazarus. And because of his public appeal, the people thought that Jesus would be the one who would overthrow the Roman government. These people were looking for a ruler. Yet how fickle they were. In just five days, some of these same people who joined their voices with those crying, crucify him. How fickle they were because in just five days, some of these people who were crying, Hosanna, would join their forces with those crying, crucify him. Now, while they expected him to come as a king, they never expected him to die. When it became apparent over the next few days that Jesus would not overthrow Rome, 
These same people who cheered him turned on him and rejected him. Listen very literally, literally. Jesus demonstrated himself to be the king of the Jews. He came unto his own. Just as the prophets have said. And his own received him not. Just as the prophets had predicted. I wonder if you're praying with me. Point number two. The purpose of the king. The purpose of the king. Now in verse 24, 27, 32, and 33 shows that Jesus is to die for sin. Now these verses paint a clear picture of why this king came into the world. He came to die. His ministry here was not about the preaching, the miracles, or the disciples. His entire life was centered around the day he would climb Calvary and be nailed to a cross. His entire purpose in living was to die on the cross. Do I have any help in here? Now, what if the Jews had received him as their king on that Palm Sunday? Would the cross have still taken place? Would the king had still died? Certainly notice, Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. Listen, had he not died, there would be, there, were, there, were, there, there had been no remission of sins. I said, had he not died, there would be, there would have been no remission or forgiveness of sins. Amen. Hebrew chapter 9 and verse 22. Had he not died, there would have been no salvation possible for any man. Had the Jews received Jesus as their king, he, he would still, listen now, he would still have gone to Calvary. He would still have been risen from the dead and ascended back to heaven. However, because they refused to have this man rule over them, they opened the door for the church age and the salvation of the church age. Jesus came to this world for the singular purpose of dying for your sin. Because he loves you and me. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Now in verse 32, also 20 through 22, Jesus came to draw men unto himself. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus the king is interested 
and drawing men unto himself. Before he died, many came to him in faith. Verses 20 through 22. However, Jesus tells us that by his death on the cross, verse 32, lifted up, refers to being crucified. Let me say that again. However, Jesus tells us that by his death on the cross, you see that in verse 31, lifted up, refers to being crucified. Many would be drawn to him. There is something very compelling about the cross. When it finally draws on the lost sinner that Jesus hung there for them. When the spirit of God makes this clear, then it is no longer a foolish thing it is no longer a thing to be scoffed at and mocked rather it becomes a thing of great power and amazement to think listen now to think that God would endure death to save a wretch like me my, my, my. That is almost more than the mind can comprehend. Dear friends, consider what Jesus endured on your behalf. Let it become real to you. I am convinced that the lack of sincerity in the church can be directed, attributed to a lack of emotion when confronted with Calvary. The truth of that brutal day doesn't even move many of those who claim to have been touched by its awesome life-changing power. Listen. The cross still has power to move. I said the cross still has power to move. Has it moved you? Does it move you still? I wonder... If you're praying with me. Now Christ's primary. Primary desire. For every life. Is that men. Come to know him. Second Peter chapter 3. And verse 9. Listen. God desire is. That you. Be saved. His desire is to see you redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This will only happen when you receive the Lord Jesus by faith and trust his finished work on the cross to save your soul. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 And verse 18. Now, Jesus saw his impending death as a time of glory. You see that in verse 23. Why? He did not intend to stay dead. I said he did not intend to stay dead. By his resurrection, 
Jesus will open the way for all men to be saved. Now in verse 24, Jesus used a picture familiar to all who heard him speaking. Everyone knew that before a crop could be harvested, seed had to be planted first. As those grains of seed were placed into the ground and died, they provided the means of whereby a plant would be produced. This new plant possess the potential to bear thousands of new grains. Now because Jesus died and is risen from the dead, he has the power woo, to duplicate his life in every single person who places their faith in him. That is why Paul could say this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Woo! And gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Not only does Jesus save us from our sins. But he also gives us a brand new life. Turn to somebody and say, wake up. He allows us to live a life that would otherwise have been impossible. This is the essence of being born again. Jesus takes us like we are. And he saves us. Woo! By his grace. Then he changes us by his power. He begins to live through us. And that makes all the difference in the world. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that in 19... 63, Jesus changed my life. Well, I wish I had some help in here. If you don't mind, look down your pew and say, neighbor, have you been changed? Now, Jesus had a living illustration in the person of Lazarus. Lazarus was living an impossible life. Yet it was a reality because of the power of God in Jesus. So it is with us. Every Christian lives an impossible life. Impossible in that we cannot do it on our own. We cannot produce the same results in the energy of the flesh. When we allow Jesus to live through us, we are living the abundant life. He spoke of in John chapter 10 and verse 10. 
Now this is supposed to be the normal Christian experience. Experience. Are you living an impossible life? If so, then give God the glory for it. For it is all his work. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is all God's work. I wish I had some help in here. I'm almost through. Point number three, the prejudice, the prejudice, prejudice against the king. The prejudice against the king. Now, in verse 34, we see they rejected his message. They rejected his message. When these Jews heard Jesus speak of being lifted up, they knew he was referring to crucifixion. They had trouble grasping the truth. That their Messiah, wow, he would be a great leader and conquer their enemies, had to first taste of death for every man or for every man. Therefore, just as men do today, they rejected the message of the cross and went on in their sins. Listen, my brothers and sisters, men today still reject the message of the cross. Far too many feel that they can do good works, be religious, or do something to commend themselves to the Lord. In truth, there is nothing that any of us can do to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we reject his message, the message of love through his death on the cross, then there is no hope. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Next, they rejected his ministry. Notice the question of the people Who is this son of man? Listen, they had taken uh, all of his preaching, uh, his teaching, uh, and his wonders, uh, and have thrown them all away. Uh, they were literally uh, rejecting uh, every second of his ministry uh, to humility. Uh, again, uh, men still do this today. The uh, they hear the gospel uh, in effect. Uh, say, I will not have this man to rule over me great God in Zion when they do this they are rejecting the only hope they have for salvation you heard it often but it bears repeating this morning there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. You see Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life and no man cometh unto the Father 
father but by him now you can reject him if that is your desire but when you do remember that you are rejecting heaven you are rejecting salvation hope and life you are instead embracing hell damnation despair and death the choice is yours next they rejected his miracles now Jesus clearly proved himself to be the Messiah yet the people refused to hear or see the truth this is still happening today people uh, scoff uh, at the message of the cross uh, and of salvation uh, through the blood of Jesus even though uh, they have the evidence the evidence uh, of many changed lives uh, and the conviction uh, with new with their own hearts uh, they call uh, the message outdated uh, yeah uh, confrontational uh, narrow minded uh, whatever the excuse men are still going to hell rather than simply receiving the claims of the Lord Jesus oh Lord do you remember the story in Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 through 9 about the brazen serpent many in Israel was bitten by the serpent by the serpents and were dying however one look at the serpent on the pole brought healing and life I am sure there were some who refused to look despite the evidence in the lives of others despite the marvelous healing power of the serpent some without a doubt refuse to look and live things are no different when it comes to the gospel all around are those who have been made whole by simple faith in the Lord Jesus yet many love their sin more than their own lives and refuse to look to Jesus I know there are some who say they have been healed who still like they are sick believe the Bible not the lives of a few sorry Christians do not allow some pet sin to take you to hell here today yeah that you cannot be saved by your good looks turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you cannot be saved by your good looks oh lord help me my father and then next yeah next note the promise of the king you see jesus promise those who receive him that they can see God may I remind you that Jesus is God in the flesh he came to reveal the father to us and if you have seen him if you have seen him if you have seen him you have seen the father if any man wants to meet God he will do so only through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ many look for God in various places when he when he will only be found in one person the Lord Jesus Christ now there is 
the promise of release. There is the promise of rescue. But let me say this in my clothing. Oh Lord, the Jews can say what they will. Jesus is still the king. Do I have any help in here? Men, women, boys and girls can can do what they please but Jesus is still the king do I have any help in here people can live as they please but Jesus is still the king and he will have the last word the only question that remains this morning is is Jesus your king do I have any help in here turn to your neighbor and ask them no question is Jesus your king oh Lord come on ask the mother is Jesus your king do you know him do you know him do you know him as your personal Lord and Savior and I'm about ready to take my seat I want to say one thing he is able he is able he is able to free you from the darkness of sin Jesus and Jesus alone has the power to break the chains of sin wait a minute I said Jesus got the power to break the chains of sin wait a minute I said Jesus can break the chains of sin wait a minute I hear the chains falling oh Lord I hear the chains falling oh Lord I thank God for my risen Savior can the church say amen I said can the church say amen if Jesus came in to your life and change your life let me see you wave your hand yeah isn't he all right isn't he all right isn't he all right all right yeah yeah he walked with me i said he walked with me he talked with me he tells me that I am his own and the joy and the joy and the joy we share as we tarry there none other will ever know and let me say this this joy this joy this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away somebody say hallelujah somebody say amen this joy that I have The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. And you know what, neighbor? You know what, church? I'm not going to let nobody steal my joy. Come on, if you don't mind, look down your pew and say, neighbor, I'm not going to let nobody steal my joy. Hallelujah. Jesus is still the king. Whether you want to believe it or not, Jesus 
is still the king. In spite of what the Jews said, in spite of what the religious leaders said, Jesus is still the king. People can live as they please, but Jesus is still the king. I'm through, but if you don't mind, look down your pew and ask your neighbor, is Jesus your king? Is Jesus your king? Everyone standing who can, everyone standing who can. We're going to extend the invitation. You may come as a candidate for baptism, Christian experience by letter, or by restoration. All of the singing, all of the singing, all of the prayers, all of the preaching have been for you. God is reaching out to you. He wants to save you. I said God wants to save you. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And to prove that he so loved you, he sent his son Jesus. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm saved today. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. All right. Those of you who desire prayer, will you please remain standing? Son, could you pray? Pray, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. need him. Let us pray. Father, it is in the name of Yeshua, it is in the name of Jesus that we come, always thanking you for his precious blood. Because his precious blood have made it possible for you to forgive us for all of our sins, past, present, and future. It is through his precious blood that we have eternal redemption. It is through his precious blood that we have access into your holy presence. And we thank you for your abiding presence. Oh, yes, it's through his precious blood that we, we can come boldly with confidence to the throne of grace. For that's where we can obtain mercy and to find grace to help in a time of need. And, Father, we want to thank you that you have given us brand new mercy this morning. And we are so glad that your mercy will endure forever. And Father, before we ask you for anything, we just want to say thank you for what you already done. You've been mighty good to us you you have been mighty merciful to us 
you you have been mighty gracious to us you you have been mighty patient with us and we want to say thank you yeah lord in spite of our unfaithfulness you have remained faithful to us and we want to say thank you oh lord you've been so good you've been so kind you've been so merciful and we want to say thank you thank you lord for putting food on our tables thank you lord for putting clothes in our closets thank you lord for pulling a roof over our heads thank you lord for your divine protection because you have been protecting us ever since we've been born into this world and your word says that your goodness and your mercy is following us all the days of our lives and we want to say thank you thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercy and Lord we are so glad that you are our shepherd and because you are our shepherd we shall not want oh Lord we shall not want for money we shall not want for bread we shall not want for water because you will provide for it all and then Lord we want to thank you for leading us beside the still waters Lord thank you for making us lie down in green pastures we want to say thank you now Lord somebody needs you this morning I don't know who it is but somebody needs a touch from you somebody need a touch from your nailed scarred hands because Lord one touch from you will make everything all right one touch from you will bring refreshing one touch from you will bring restoration now Lord now Lord heal sugar diabetes now Lord heal cancer right now now Lord heal high blood pressure heal brositis heal female disorders in the name of Jesus and Lord before I close this prayer I just want to open up my mouth just one more time and tell you thank you thank you Lord thank you now church help me say hallelujah help me say hallelujah help me say glory to God help me say thank you Jesus isn't he all right isn't the Lord all right I said isn't the Lord all right yeah yeah oh thank you thank you Lord thank you for answered prayer thank you for answered prayer and we even thank you for moving in our midst because I believe you gave someone a miracle and 
we ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What time is it, Ebenezer? It's giving time. Welcome back. I know you were encouraged by that word, Jesus the King. And if you were encouraged, we simply ask that you leave us a message, a comment. Let us know how the word of God is impacting and changing your life. It certainly would mean a lot to us. Simply go to our website at ebcwilmington.org. And on the contact page, just leave us your email so that we can stay in contact with you. I'll let you know what's going on here at the ministry. We also ask if this ministry is being a blessing to you. Why don't you go ahead and share it? Share it with a coworker. Share it with a family member. Share it with a friend who needs to be encouraged and uplifted by the word of God. We're also on social media. Simply go to Facebook or the ABC Wilmington. And why don't you go ahead and just click that follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. And it would make our hearts feel so glad if you would just go ahead and click that subscribe button. So once again, thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience. We truly hope that your life is being impacted, it's being challenged and changed by the word of God. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to come and worship with us. We've taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. We're located at 2200 North Claymont Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we'd be so glad to have you and to worship with you and your family. So once again, thank you so much. Until next time. Take care, be safe, and God bless.